Hi, it's The Wire. It's Wednesday, September 29th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. For premium content, DeWire 70905.substack.com. Now, I need to refine a bet I suggested here online earlier in the Shakur Stevenson fight. Then let's talk about what I believe is a huge opportunity involving 37 and 0. Jaime Munguia, he's fighting Gabe Rosado. That fight's going to be on the zone. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now folks, the odds matter greatly. Let's live in the world of probability. I believe Shakur Stevenson wins by decision. Right? I believe Shakur Stevenson is able to pick up Jamal Herring's title and do so by decision. But understand, the casinos have really priced this fight strangely. Herring is the champion. Herring beat Carl Frampton, knocked him down twice. They have Herring going off as a plus 475 underdog. Folks, you don't even have to figure out how Herring would win. Even though I feel Stevenson is going to win the fight. You need to have, at least I need to have, you think for yourself, I'm telling you what I'm doing. I need to have Herring at plus 475 as part of my betting portfolio. So the way we're going to play this to make money, because understand, the casino's hardly giving you a rate of return on the Stevenson side. He's a minus 714 right now. The way I'm going to play this, since I feel Stevenson lacks the power or the temperament to take out Herring early, the way I'm going to play this, fine-tune my earlier video, given these odds, right? The facts change, the pick's going to change. Given these odds, I like the over in the fight. That takes care of Stevenson by decision. I like the over in the fight hedged with, and we don't have to be clever here, Jamal Herring simply to win. Now, I know some people's heads are spinning. Understand, I think Stevenson wins the fight. But I need to structure this in a way where it's profitable. Understand, if Stevenson wins by decision, you win on that side of the bet, and you do so. Right? When I say that side of the bet, I mean on the over on the bet, and you do so at substantially better odds than the minus 714. But understand, if Herring wins, let's say Herring wins by decision, you collect on the over and you collect on Herring to win. You would collect on both halves of the play. Of course, you're getting a plus 475 if Herring wins either by KO or by stoppage. So, let me amend my earlier video. While I expect Stevenson to win, I believe it's going to be by decision. So the way I'm going to gamble it, and I'm going to have to place additional bets on this, the way I'm going to gamble it is the over hedged with Herring simply to win. Let's shift gears. You know, I know most fans are looking at big fights, right? The recent fight, Usyk, Joshua, the upcoming Deontay Wilder Fury fight, for example, right, to make money. I'm just telling you that the best opportunities to make money are when you spot a fighter who has holes in his game and you patiently wait for that fighter to come up against a guy who has the skill set to take advantage of those holes. Now, Jaime Munguia is 37 and 0. Let's be clear here. He's 37 and 0. 
This fight with Gabe Rosado just got announced. I have not seen the odds. Right? Maybe when I see them, I'll be surprised. But I feel I need to make this video early because I believe you're going to get compelling value here. Right? It's very rare to see a fighter as highly regarded as Munguia is, who has the defensive holes in his game. Folks, often this guy is completely defenseless. Now I know he's 37 and 0. Right? But understand he's completely defenseless. He's the guy who has no idea. Let me repeat that. He has no idea what he's doing defensively. It's because he's a KO puncher. Right? He's a knockout puncher. It's because he's very good at doling out punishment. And it's because he's successful that the people around him and he himself haven't seen a need to develop his defense. So he's 24 and he's vulnerable to a counter-punching hard hitter who's going to be unafraid to trade with him. Now look, I'm not trying to be PC here. Right? I really don't have time to be PC. So I'm sorry if I'm about to offend some people. But understand, in my opinion, Gabe Rosado, and I understand Rosado himself has challenges, right? One of them is age. He's in his mid-30s. But Gabe Rosado has beaten better recently than Jaime Munguia. Right? Rosado, and I know this is not the way the official scoring saw it, but I thought Rosado beat Danny Jacobs. Right? Let's just say, at a minimum, that's a highly competitive fight. Right? Rosado's last fight, and I know the guy record wise was 7 0, but Rosado was the big underdog going into that fight because he was fighting a guy who was a decorated amateur. A guy who had won bouts in spectacular fashion on his front foot, a big hitter. And Rosado allowed the guy to get Rosado up against the ropes. And Rosado had it planned when the guy came in to continue the onslaught. And by the way, Munguia, two front foot heavy. Just like Rosado's last opponent. Rosado cleaned his clock. Hit him so hard that when the guy hit the canvas, Rosado just danced by him. Right? Ran to the corner. Rosado didn't need to stick around for the count. He knew that fight had changed. He knew the guy had no hope left against him. Now, I'm not saying Rosado beats Munguia. I'm not saying that at all. Understand, I don't have to know if that happens. In my opinion, to structure a bet where I make a nice rate of return. So I'm guessing here, without seeing the line, again, the fight's going to be on the zone. I'm guessing that you're going to get conservatively at least 3 to 1 on Rosado. That's conservatively. I'm guessing the real line is going to be akin to the odds you're getting on Jamal Herring in the Shakur Stevenson fight. I'm guessing Rosado goes off at something like a plus 400. Right? I believe because Rosado knows how to push an opponent, because Rosado is going to force Munguia to consider the fact that Rosado might be able to throw counter power shots on him. Because Rosado is not going to be afraid, because the guy's from Philly and the guy has been in the ring with better. I believe Munguia's only chance of winning this fight in which he's going to be heavily favored. If it's a 12-round fight, you need to 
key on the rounds. If it's 10 rounds, I'm not as interested. If it's 12 rounds, I'm very interested. If it's a 12 round fight, I believe Munguia's only chance is to win by stoppage. Now, I don't believe the public sees it that way. But understand what that's going to allow me to do. I can cut through the long odds on Munguia, right? And I could say, okay, I'm just going to take him by stoppage to get a better rate of return. Right? Then I can hedge the play with Rosado simply to win. But I need for everyone here to understand the risk involved and it's substantial. If the young 24 year old, who many people feel has huge box office potential in the sport, in other words, the power structure will favor the guy who will be able to pay back the power structure over time, right? Young guys are prioritized in the sport, especially if they have crowd-pleasing KO styles. If Munguia wins this fight by decision, you lose it all. Let's be clear on the risk involved. But understand, if he wins it by KO, that part of the hedge holds. If Rosado wins the fight by KO or by decision, you're cleaning up. Getting great odds on a vet who lately has lifted his game, quite frankly. He's been fighting tough fighters and he's been holding his own of late. And he's that guy who you know, because he's a vet, he's already gone through the juvenile part of his career where he's talking too much game and getting an opponent riled up before a fight and, you know, trying to represent his old neighborhood. He's already been there, done all that. Now he's the vet who realizes that he's on borrowed time, that he needs to keep himself in shape between fights. That it's not about testosterone and being boisterous. It's actually about technique and skills. Right? Because Rosado himself was a highly touted young fighter years ago, he understands that a Munguia might not understand the importance of defense that the people around him seeing the easy paydays that come from Munguia blowing out opponents don't feel they have enough social capital to say to a guy who looks destined for bigger paydays hey player you know maybe we need to work on other things other than big hooks and power shots right understand it takes a lot for someone in a fighter's corner to say, hey man, player, you you have a lot of talent, but you're ignoring a key part of the game. I think, I think Munguia is the kind of guy who needs to learn the hard way. I think Rosado is going to try to teach him a lesson here. Right? Rosado is the kind of guy who's hoping a young opponent, a guy who's going to be younger by 10 plus years, is going to take him for granted, is going to think he can just walk through the old lion, Right, is going to think that, well, I'm the future of boxing. This old guy never quite lived up to the hype. How is he going to stop me? If I just fight my regular game, I can send us home early. Right? If Munguia pulls it off, guess what? You have him by KO. If he doesn't, guess what? You make a mint. Revisit Rosado against Danny Jacobs. You're going to see that this version of Gabe Rosado is a much better boxer 
than younger Gabe Rosado. I believe this is that dynamic that pops up in boxing every once in a while. Right? Overcomplacent young guy with holes in his game he may or may not know about. Right? Understand, style wise, Munguia is a hooker. He kind of sees himself, in my opinion, as a Julian Jackson. Right? Let's remember when the great Julian Jackson, major KO puncher, fought Mike McCallum, a guy who had a punch but who saw the sport as a craft. Mike McCallum deconstructed him. There's a chance Gabe Rosado does that here. Right? Rosado, great KO in his last fight against a very tough, highly thought of, highly favored opponent. Excellent fight before that against Danny Jacobs. Right? This is that vet who has had the career wake up call, who realizes he left some success on the table and who now understands the dynamic a lot better. The bet I'm recommending is the long shot underdog. Cabe Rosado, simply to win. That's if the fight's a 12 round fight. Right, you're getting, well you're gonna get great odds on him. I haven't seen the odds yet, I'll be stunned if Rosado isn't going off as as at least a plus 300. Right? In other words, I'm expecting the casinos to price this in such a way where they're going to tell you that if these guys fought four times, Rosado would lose three of the four. Right? If they price the fight that way, then it's game on. I like Rosado to win hedged with Munguia by stoppage if the fight is a 12 round fight. The fact that it's going to be on the zone just intensifies it that much more because I'm sure Munguia who's been a bit protected. Right? Let's face it. He's kind of like Jamal Charlo. He's been around too long to not have fought top tier opponents. Right? I believe Munguia is going to feel the pressure to make a statement against a vet who quite frankly is not going to be intimidated by him. Who sees the big puncher but who also sees the opportunities, the defensive lapses. Right? So I like Munguia by KO as part of the hedge. The other part of the hedge is going to be Gabe Rosado simply to win. Understand you don't have to play it 50-50. You could structure the bet so that you win if either part of the bet hits. You profit. That's how I see it. To sum up this video, the Shakur Stevenson odds have stunned me. Right, The casino is giving you too long odds on the champion, Herring. Right? All right, great. Even though I think Stevenson's going to win, the way I'm going to play it is the over. Because I believe Stevenson needs to win by decision. Hedged with Herring simply to win. Right? The Herring side so tasty that I'm likely to structure it so that if the over hits but Herring loses, all I do is break even. That'll be worth the spin of the wheel. Because if you win on a plus 475 part of the play, ooh, then you're in the penthouse, then you're sipping on Moet, then it's a party. Right? With regard to the Munguia Rosado fight, folks, I think the Munguia folks think this is a victory lap fight. I believe they're going to be in with a vet who sees this as a career opportunity. I like the long shot to win the fight hedged with Munguia by stoppage but understand the risk. Right? If Munguia wins by decision you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. 
Thanks for stopping by.